Welcome to part five of my video series on sequential art slash comics and superheroes. Uh, this actually begins the second part of my lecture notes, where I get into comic books and the golden age of comics. Uh, now, before, uh, on my other videos, I was going into the prehistory of the art form, went into the early comic strips, but today I actually get into the comic book. Uh, that's one of these floppy periodicals that you see before you. Uh, the very first comic book that was ever published uh, was published back in 1933, and it was called Funnies on Parade. What it was was a reprint book, and it reprinted newspaper strips, and it was given away for free. Now, this was so popular that more reprint books were published to be sold on the newsstand. Shortly after, comics began printing new material covering a wide array of genres, uh, most of them were crudely drawn and poorly written as the publishers hurried them out, assembly line style. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that there weren't talented writers and artists on these comics. It's just it was done in such, as I said, assembly line style. These things were cranked out. In many ways, they were kind of figuring out the art form as they went along. I'm not saying that there isn't anything good in there. Certainly, there are some gems. There's some wonderful stuff. Uh, but it's not always good. Uh, you know, sometimes people say, oh, the old stuff is always the best stuff. Uh, not always. I, I think you could make a good argument for other time periods in comics history uh, for being a bit better. But uh, these are still pretty admirable because uh, they were they were so inventive and essentially anything goes and they were just doing whatever they could. Anyway, uh, some of these uh, artists... Uh, originally, they were people who tried to get their work published in the newspaper strips. And there were these two young men who tried to introduce this one character to the newspapers, and it was rejected over and over again. Uh, this is an image here of one of their, uh, sort of their original idea. And you're saying, oh my goodness, uh, the reign of the Superman, super with a dash man, uh, seems to be talking about some sort of bad, evil type character. Uh, but eventually this character evolved into what we all now know and recognize as Superman. Uh, he first appeared in Action Comics number one in 1939. Uh, Jerry Siegel and Joe Schuster were his creators, and here's the crazy thing about this. Uh, you know, you think about Superman, you, you can go pretty much anywhere in the world, and people recognize Superman. You can draw something as crude as this. I mean, I took two seconds to draw this, and I think most people, you can go anywhere in the world, you can show them this really bad picture, and they would instantly go, Superman, because he's just so recognizable. He's just so iconic. And, it, you know, this whole, uh, it, it may have gone nowhere. And if you look at a lot of things that are really popular, uh, you look at the Beatles, for instance, they were met with rejection time and time again. Uh, when they tried to bring him here to the United States, they were told, oh, you guys just don't know what Americans like to listen to. Uh, that's what their producers were told. So, you know, this kind of thing happens that this well-known, much-beloved character all over the world uh, almost never was. Now, of course, I imagine most of you guys know the basic concept of Superman. Uh, he was rocketed to Earth by his father uh, just before the doomed planet Krypton exploded. I'm going to show you various uh, comics over the years here. Shows you the evolution of how the character has looked as different artists have worked on them. Anyway, a little bit more uh, about Superman. So he was adopted by an elderly couple, the Kents, who raised him as their own. As he grew, he realized that he had, he had great strength and speed. Uh, his flight, which is what he's probably most famous for, uh, that didn't come until later stories. It wasn't in the original uh, comics. Uh, he just jumped really far. So, anyway, uh, he, you know, super strong, super fast, you know, could do almost anything. And now he uses his great powers to benefit humanity in the never-ending battle for truth, justice, and the American way. Now, I'm not the first person to ever point this out. 
But Superman's story, it closely mirrors the story of the American immigrant. Uh, he is from somewhere else. He comes to America. He changes his name. Now, I realize not as many immigrants do that as they used to, but that was a really common thing, that people would come to the United States and they would change their names to sound more American. So originally he's Cal L from Krypton, but he becomes Clark Kent from Earth, or, you know, let's really say what we mean here, from America. And, uh, you know, and not only does he become, uh, does he become one of us, he becomes a shining a great example of America and American values and what Amer being American means. And as I have said, uh, if you saw my video on how on um, appreciating comics, and I talked about Carl Barks who created Uncle Scrooge, uh, that the unfortunate thing when it comes to comics is uh, this: it's a, it involves a long history of artists and writers not really getting what's coming to them. And Jerry Siegel and Joe Schuster, when they created this character, they essentially signed the rights off uh, to the publisher. And so basically, they, you know, they got, it was a work for hire kind of a thing. They got paid when they produced Superman comics. But if the company made cartoons and lunchboxes and t-shirts and pajamas and TV shows and radio shows and movies, and, you know, which they've done, uh, Jerry Siegel and Joe Schuster, they didn't see, see a dime off of that. And it's a really sad story because well into the 1970s, uh, and realize again, Superman debuted in 1939, excuse me, actually 1938, uh, up until, you know, at that point, you know, they had no way of knowing that uh, Superman would, you know, last more than a few issues, that it would become this international phenomenon, that it would make the company that much money. So, I mean, in hindsight, you might be wondering, it's like, well, why, why would they do that? Why would they give up all their, uh, you know, why would they just hand this character over? Because they didn't realize what he was. And there's all kinds of characters that, uh, you know, have been published and introduced that, you know, most people don't know about, that we've just forgotten about, and nobody is continuing to buy toys or make movies based on them. And so up until the 1970s, uh, they actually weren't doing very well. Uh, one of them was, I believe, making minimum wage. Uh, they were having a really rough time. I want to relate to you guys a quick story uh, from an artist, uh, Neil Adams, uh, where he talks about a conversation he had with Joe Schuster. He says, and I asked Joe one time, Joe, there was a Superman musical on Broadway, right? Did you ever see the musical? And Joe said, oh, you know, that musical was so popular that everybody came there. I used to go down there and I would watch the famous people that would go in like the president of the United States famous movie stars, Frank Sinatra, and all these people would go in and they were going to see my character. And I said, Joe, that's interesting. Wow. But I really wanted to know was what you thought of the show. Joe said, oh, well, I couldn't afford to go to the show. Much too expensive. Uh, that is really sad. The guy creates, uh, co-creates this beloved character can't afford to see the musical based on his creation. Now, I, this has a bit of a better ending. Uh, the artist that I mentioned there, Neil Adams, he led a fight to get these guys uh, some recognition. And when the original Superman movie came out in the late 1970s, they got recognition on the credits. And, you know, Warner Brothers made the movie and DC Comics. They did pay them and they did start getting some money. Uh, now, whether they got really what they were owed is another th question. You can get into the argument about that all you want. Uh, but it's it's kind of a sad thing, uh, again, for such a beloved character, uh, for his creators to not get, uh, you know, the, the recognition for so long is, is really quite unfortunate.